Hi everyone, this is Rez, and today on Due Process De Novo, we will be talking about the new icon system and planning overhaul for Due Process. Let's get into it. Alright everyone, so DevBlog81 was recently released for the icon system and the planning overhaul, so we're just going to take a quick look at that and see what's been added for those of you who have uh, not yet played the new update. So one of the core features of Due Process is the tactical planning experience. With the latest update to the game, we've now introduced the icon system and planning overhaul. It makes creating, communicating, and executing plans even better. Uh, they then go on to kind of illustrate kind of an example of uh, what these icons can help you with. But uh, we'll, we'll scroll down to uh, kind of more bullet points and uh, get into it here. So the icon will allow you to express your plans better. You can drag icons onto the map to indicate where your equipment like flashbangs, door charges, barbed wire, or molotov should go. It also assists in distributing the different tasks players can claim, uh, icons to indicate that they'll get the job done. Uh, a claimed icon will also remind you to pick up the equipment as, and serve as a waypoint during execution. So having played with this so far, uh, I, I really, really enjoy this system. Um, they added, uh, obviously you can click and drag, but there's also hotkeys here. Uh, and you can unbind those if you want, but you can also use them to uh, pop up a, an item here. And so you can have you know, your Molotovs or your barbed wire per se, place it where you like it and then click on it to claim it, uh, which is really important because some people forget to click on it and claim it and that can cause problems. All right, let's move on to planning and gear up. Uh, to get everybody on the same page, the planning phase is now separated into two distinct phases, planning and gear up. Planning lasts a short while, which, uh, a short while during which attackers will be locked into their seats and the defender weapons lockers will be shut. Uh, the combined map view starting open by default for this phase should direct players' attention to making a plan. Gear up starts next, where attackers can stand up and the defender's weapon cages open. Now it's time to pick up your gear. Nobody is stopping you, however, from continuing to plan during the gear up phase if you want to take more time. And then they say check out the full Steam patch notes, which we have up here. We'll take a quick look at the little doodle though. Perfect dragon, I love it, I love it. All right. So update 640, Torch Paladin. So the icon system. The map view can now, now contains an assortment of draggable icons that can be placed in the map view. The icons can be seen by your team and are representations of gear that you might need to use for the round. Once placed in the map via dragging from the tray or using the associated rebindable key hotkeys, like I said, uh, they will appear as a puck in the map. Pucks can be moved, claimed, deleted, and show the claimed owner, if any. Uh, pucks you've cleared will appear yellow to differentiate them between your team's pucks, similarly to the player puck. Claimed pucks will keep a uh, will be given a green checkbox if the player who claimed them has the indicated equipment in their inventory. After claiming a puck, the item on the defender uh, slash attacker truck wall will highlight in yellow outline, which is really really nice because it basically reminds you that you need to go and get this piece of uh, equipment that you've selected that you will have. It's a good it's a good reminder. Uh, after claiming a puck, a puck, a flashing icon will appear over the slot in your inventory if you haven't picked the item up yet. So it's good, yeah, they have multiple, multiple things telling you what you need to grab. The map view icon lists also, uh, list also shows how many of each item you have left in the armory for this round and which ones are claimed. Icons exist for all placeable and throwable equipment along with snipers for both teams. An additional exclamation puck exists and can be seen in the world by all members of your team. Get creative with its usage. Um, so, so just mentioning this here, you have it's five pucks for exclamation marks, so you can point out, you know, specific callouts on where you think enemies will be and other places that you'll want to keep your attention just in case. Which, as a defender, it's good for you know labeling where you think they'll push and where you think they're going to hold up. And as an attacker, obviously, you know where people will be lying in wait for you and things like that. Um, I also like that they added the sniper and the auto shoddy in for uh, different pucks that you can uh, have because that's that's really helpful on you know having your team plan on where you're gonna hold up and perch for for sniping or where you're gonna lie in wait with that uh, auto shoddy. The one thing I did suggest to Pyan the other day on uh, the community hours though was uh, I would be interested in seeing if they could have a take NVGs button. Uh, that, that's one of the only pieces of equipment that I didn't see have an actual marker to it. Uh, but moving on, let's see. 
Icon pucks can be pinged to draw attention to them, using your default ping key while hovering over the puck, which I've seen and that's, it works really well. Claiming a puck will cause it to show up in the world uh, for the claimed player to help guide them to follow the plan. Uh, I really like this. Um, now, barbed wire, when you place it, will disappear when you place it in the right spot. Uh, I don't think throwing like a flare in the correct area that you said you'd throw it or a molly, I don't think that gets rid of it. Um, so I would almost like to see if they can have um, just a general area that if you throw your correct item in the general area of your, your pinged location for that item, uh, that it would either disappear there, or if you have to use it somewhere else, that that icon disappear as well because you no longer have that item. I think that would be a good, a good, uh, a good upgrade uh, to the system. But honestly, for for now, if you run through it, it disappears, and uh, I think it just works out really well uh, overall so far. Uh, let's see, moving through a claimed puck will remove it in in world view. Yep, we just said that. Uh, Barbar will show a box in the planning and in world view when placed which can be rotated with the scroll wheel while hovering. Barbed wire icons will not clear unless a wire is placed in their location. Pretty good. Uh, planning overhaul. The planning phase has now been split into two phases, planning and gear up. Casual and ranked have had some time changes for each game mode and are now lo or no longer the same in time in each. The attackers and defenders will not be able to pick up gear during the planning phase to encourage making a plan first and picking up gear second. See next point. However, the planning phase for casual is very short. Most of the pre-execution time is gear up. The planning phase for ranked is longer, with a shorter uh, gear up time to encourage more in-depth planning. Specifically, the attackers will be locked in the new seats added to the attacker truck, while the defender weapons case will remain closed during planning. Planning during the gear up phase is not restricted, and you can continue to plan during the gear up uh, phase if necessary. Which honestly, I think most people do. I mean, you can grab your things pretty quickly when you know what you need. And especially if you've already selected it and highlighted it for the most part, it'll be easier for new people as well. Um, but yeah, you can always just hit tab and keep planning, which I think most people do. You only need a few seconds to pick up the stuff you need. Players will be forced out of the map execution should they not realize the round has started and have not yet closed the map at any point to gear up. I think that's pretty helpful. I think the, the giant numbers they've added uh, help with this a lot. The giant countdown that they put on your screen is going to make it a lot harder to, to miss the fact that uh, it's the gear up phase or that the execution phase is coming. Casual, 20 seconds planning, 70 seconds gear up, which is plus 15 seconds gear up for attackers in the setup. Ranked, 50 seconds for planning and 40 seconds for gear up. 15 plus seconds gear up for attackers in the setup. HUD overlay for phase changes has been changed to more present and alerting. An on-screen countdown to, for the execution phase was added to give more warning to both teams of imminent execution phase, which we just mentioned. This, this is what I really liked. Uh, the music, the adding the music was great. Uh, music is back. Much of the game's soundtrack has been re-implemented for different phases and transitions. An alternate music track plays in the main menu, which is great because I love that one song, but it's good to have more than one song. Music changes while queuing for a match, perfect. Music for loading, planning, and short transition tracks for various phase changes in the game. Uh, this, I like. My only concern is though, is for people trying to listen for footsteps early on in the game. But I think with the, the changes in sound that they're looking at making, I don't know if that will affect us that much. I think exterior walls are gonna be a lot harder to hear through unless you literally have your ear up to it and they are sprinting on the other side very closely. Uh, but I guess we'll just see how that shakes out. But for now, honestly, it's it's really not a problem to have the music. And you always do have the option of shutting the music off if you'd like. Uh, Dome keeps its own theme separately from the music track used on other maps because it slaps. Uh, asymmetric music per team. Attackers and defenders have different music. Oh, that I wasn't actually fully aware of. But I think that actually thematically works really well. Grenade sound changes missed on the last patch notes. Yeah, that, that was a surprise uh, when the when the last patch came and the grenade just sounded completely different. Everyone's like, wait a minute, that sound changed, but no one had mentioned it. Uh, frag grenade explosion sound updated. Grenades now have separate sounds for pin, pull, and spoon eject, which is really nice. There's no more surprise blowing up. <laughs> uh, fix an issue where grenade explosions were not attenuating correctly. Uh, door kicks. Fix D-Day boat uh, door not counting as a door kick sound for attenuous purposes. Uh, attenuation purposes. I can English. Uh, raised minimum attenuation to make far occluded doors easier to hear. Uh, kicks now occlude less if being heard through exterior walls. Fixed door kicks in loading screen.
and other changes. Molotovs now have an explosion effect when detonating to help identify where they land. Fixed recent bug that allowed players to shoot through or over walls in certain circumstances. Players should no longer be able uh, be damaged during certain transition phases. Updated EAC debug UI for when client files are in an invalid state. Fixed barbed wire for sat view, which I like because uh, whenever you go to the sat view, you couldn't see where your barbed wires were placed as a defender. So that's that's actually a nice change as well. Um, interesting. So overall, uh, I've had the chance to play through this update and it has been fantastic. I think the music alone helps the game feel very fresh. Um, but things like the the countdown tickers between um, planning and gear up and gear up and execution are fantastic because it's way harder to miss the fact that um, you're, you know, you're transitioning. And as well, the music also helps with that as well. So I think that's super awesome. Uh, the addition of the chairs uh, for attackers, I kind of like. It is kind of weird. You, you can almost feel like you get seasick if you look left and right as an attacker too much. Um, but I do like the seats. I think aesthetically, the only thing I'd like to see is maybe a little tablet attached to it. So you can see like a fake kind of map attached to it, kind of like the defenders have in the center of their uh, their, their planning room. I think that would be kind of cool. Uh, that's just an aesthetic thing. But uh, I, obviously the big the big change here is the uh, the icon system and the planning. And I, I have really enjoyed that. I've heard from some people that uh, they kind of just like drawing specifically more. But I do think that uh, this is a good change for people who maybe don't have a mic or who aren't talking. Um, it's always good to have that system. Even though we do want to encourage people to talk, I think it's a good, I think it's a good thing to have overall. Um, and especially the, the amount uh, that you can use it and select things, it, it, just, it just works so well. And that'll be it for Due Process De Novo. Let me know what you think of this new update. Uh, I really like it. And I think it's overall just going to make the game even better. Uh, it's been fun to play with, and uh, I'm really, really glad this update finally came. I think the devs really knocked it out of the park with this one. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I will see you guys later. Yeah!